this so it's just two coats of um, shellac. Really, really light sand of 1200, then another coat, then another light sand, which I'll do now. And all you're doing is just getting any little sort of prickly bits off. If you've applied it properly, you shouldn't have thick um, brush strokes. So finish with your hand, just feel it lightly down. If you over sand, you'll get um, ball patches um, where you haven't got any shellac as a seam, so you don't want that. So dust it all off. <coughs> So, this is the um, size. Now, size is basically an oil based varnish. Okay? And all varnishes and paints, uh, oil based ones, have a dryer. The dryer is just to make it set more quickly. So, you can have different oil sizes. You have Japanese oil size, which has a lot of dryer, and basically it will go hard in about an hour. So, basically, you want to put Japanese size on. Um, you've got 20 minutes to lay it. Fine, you wait about 20 minutes, quarter of an hour, and then it'll be too hard and roughly an hour. So you've only got about half an hour window. Um, then you get one and a half hour, three hours, which is three hours, and you get 12 hour and 24 hour. So for this sort of work, three hours is about right. Um, the reason you're having different hour settings is that if you're doing a really big job, you don't want to be stopping and starting all the time. So you could do um, 12 hours, paint a large area, and then Roughly after six hours, and for about another 12 hours, you could lay the log if you haven't got that small time. The trouble with having a long open time is that you've got more time for dust to settle on it before mm -hmm. you put the log on. Um, also, the longer time allows any uh, brush strokes to flatten out. Right? You'll find the Japanese gold size doesn't produce such a good result because you brush it on and very, very little brush marks. But it begins to stiffen up almost immediately. It hasn't got time to flatten out. So, so the Japanese is not good? No. Not, no. Okay. Oh. So um, three hours is probably the best compromise. Now, they do vary a lot. This is um, uh, mm -hmm. really the one I wanted. Gosh, I bought another one. Anyway, um, so they do vary. They say three hours, but they can vary. I bought three hour ones, which are really in half an hour, and then mm -hmm. they've only got a two hour opening time. Um, so, for most of your three hours is good. It has enough time to settle out, but not so long in your dust. So, so it will say on the bottle, it will say... It will say how many hours, three how hours. How many hours you have, yeah. yeah. So you can, you can follow that yeah. roughly, yeah. 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 So you just order three hours. Did, did I tell you to buy some? Or yes. 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 yes, yes. So, um, the main trick with this is A, get your gesso and B, your seal as smooth as possible because it, it'll only be as good as your base. So, any, uh, it's more forgiving than water gilding where you really are burnishing hard, so every little scratch shows up. It's a bit more forgiving than that, but still, um, things will show up a bit. So, the first trick is to get all that preparation done. The second trick <coughs> is to apply this really thinly because what would happen if you If you apply it too thickly, what happens is that the top will dry quick more in the beginning, right, and that stretches, but what's underneath will dry and contract, and that will cause ripples in the skin on the top. See what I mean? So if you put it too thickly, you'll form a skin on the top, which is all right by itself, but everything else will start to dry and contract, and that will cause the skin to crinkle. So when you put your gold down, you get little ripples. So the trick is just to put it as really as thin as you can. Okay. And this is why probably a synthetic, soft synthetic brush might be better. Because having a bit of spring to it, you can really work it out, okay. spread it out more. If it's a really soft brush, you won't be able to. Also, you don't want to um, overbrush. If you overbrush while it's beginning to stiffen a bit, then, of course, it hasn't got enough time to settle out um, and, and even out. So uh, it's, a it's a combination, not putting much brush on your brush and um, spreading it out, but not over working it. Okay. Um, now, you, if you, you couldn't be anyway, but if you just throw over the next two years, always dipped into this like that, you're going to accumulate of dust in that. Mm. So you always transfer a little bit to a dimple. And just go from that and chuck the rest, but you don't use away. So this is kept in pristine condition. 
What what cleans the uh, white spirit? White Not spirit. Bitter, just the white spirit. White spirit. So get a dimple that's entirely clean of any dust or anything. Um, probably they say to shake it, but sort of shaking can create bubbles that probably give it a bit of shake. Not too vigorous. Um, it'll come with a little tab, it'll pull the tab out. And then you need to have on hand, not as an afterthought, a place to put it without dust. So I bought two suitcases there. We can probably get six or seven into the suitcase out of the dust. Then we'll have to think of something else in the cupboards here, probably. Oh, I've got a box here. I think it's a box here. So that's really important because any dust settles will be underneath the gold. And, um, and the other skill, we'll go over this later, the other skill is um, how to. When to, to polish, you can't burnish, but with a soft brush um, you can polish. If you do it too soon, even if it's a soft brush, you'll, you'll scratch through the gold a bit. If you leave it too late, editing so hard won't make any difference. You can give a nice little soft burnish at the right time using your gilder's mop. So that's the other trick there. Um, it's just got a bit of a skin here. 